Hi everyone. Um, today I want to remind some of you and perhaps introduce to some of you for the first time what we call the prayer of Jabez, the prayer of Jabez. You know, there's some wonderful prayers in the Bible that we can really take uh, as the Holy Spirit leads us and pray through like the the Lord's Prayer or 1 Chronicles 7 about if my people humble themselves and pray, I will heal their land. And uh, the Jabez prayer is something that I discovered. a num Well, I didn't discover it. I discovered it for myself a number of years when uh, I heard of a book uh, by Bruce Wilkinson on the prayer of Jabez, which I recommend to you if this really grabs you, this theme. Um, and uh, uh, and for a series of uh, of a number of months, I uh, felt led to pray the prayer of Jabez every day. I would pray it on the tube on the way in to work. That's when I would do it. And it was very powerful for that season. And every so often I will uh, take the prayer of Jabez and pray it over my life, my circumstances, uh, my family, my life group, and of course, Emmanuel. And so I just want to share this, this powerful prayer and the four points of this prayer that you can really use as the Holy Spirit leads you to great effect. Now, let me share this with you so you can uh, see. It's taken from 1 Chronicles, 1 Chronicles, chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. 1 Chronicles, chapter 4 and verse 9 to 10. Now, let me just set the scene here, because the first nine chapters of Chronicles, if you open up your Bibles and have a look, is all genealogy. Who begat who and who who was and, and whose different lines became tribes and nations. So nine chapters of family lines. Uh, and uh, but the interesting thing is, is that in chapter four, as the author is going through the different genealogies, when he gets to Jabez, he pauses. Interesting, he doesn't pause for anybody else. He just tells you um, the line of the family line of this person and that person. So this is significant that within nine chapters of doing genealogies, the author, when he comes to Jabez, pauses, pauses. Something must have really stood out about Jabez amongst all the other names, nine chapters of names for uh, for the author to pause. And of course, we believe it wasn't just the author, but it was the Holy Spirit that led the author to pause when he came to Jabez. So this is a very uh, significant uh, couple of verses for the Holy Spirit to sort of like say to the author, stop, stop right there. Consider Jabez. What did he do? He prayed. And so that's why I think this is a very important passage in the Bible. And also that's why I believe we can learn a lot about this prayer and that it's an example meant for us to pray through as the Holy Spirit leads. I'm going to read it to you. Now, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers and his mother called him Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may ca not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. We'll come back to that there. Now, the first thing to say is, what a start Jabez had in his life. It didn't look very promising, did it? Can you imagine if uh, your mother gave birth to you and she'd had such a difficult time bearing you and it was so difficult to, to birth you that she actually named you after her negative experience because the word Jabez means pain. And the verse says his mother called him Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. So the story stat starts difficult, doesn't it? I wonder if the mother held the grudge against Jabez for what she went through. Why would you call your son such a negative thing? Uh, you'd call him something like, you know, delight or, or wonderful or whatever. But, you know, to call him a pain, 
Imagine every day if your name was Payne in your family. Hey, Payne, dinner's ready. Oi, Payne, get ready for school. Hey, Payne, your friends are coming round. Hey, Payne, you know, imagine me called Payne. Uh, that's going to affect you, isn't it? You're going to feel a bit guilty, a bit down, a bit self-conscious. Maybe he felt guilty about what he had suffered his mother. And every time his mother called him his name, uh, she would remember and he would feel guilty. And when everybody else called him his name, hey, Jabez, hey, Payne, it was just not good, is it? It's not healthy. I mean, the mother um, needed serious Christian counselling uh, uh, after uh, having done that. So this is this is interesting. But God, God is sovereign in all things. And even being called pain in your early life um, can glorify God in your later life. And so Jabez, this pain, it didn't start well, but it was going to end wonderfully. Maybe you look back in your early years or your formative years and uh, you look back with pain, pain at some of the things you've experienced and and gone through. I, I don't know if, 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 if you're the same as me, but when I look back at things in the past, it's the painful things that I often remember first and I forget all the good things. I mean, I had a very happy childhood, especially compared to many others. Very happy. Very, very happy. But when I go back into my mind, to my childhood, I always remember the painful parts first. And I have to stop myself and say, wait a second. There was lots of uh, the vast majority of it was a very happy and blessed childhood. But maybe when you go back and think of your childhood, teenage years, early 20s, whatever, maybe maybe you say, well, Bruce, there wasn't actually much, much joy in it. I went through some very, very painful things. And, um, you know, maybe when you look at yourself back in those times, you might call yourself Jabez, you know, it was just painful. It was difficult. It was, uh, you know, it was pain. It was pain. Well, Jabez is an encouragement for you because God has a, a habit of um, taking people that have suffered and been through pain and redeeming them and, and turning them into something very um, special. And God has a special plan for those named pain um, because he can trust those that have gone through pain, come through pain, just like Jesus did, can sympathize and empathize with other people going through pain. And if they can come through that pain and get a measure of healing, then they can be used in incredibly powerful ways. Remember, nothing's lost on God when you're a Christian. Even terrible, painful things in the past, God can use for good. Uh, he can turn the devil's work for good. He can turn harm from others to good. We just got to make sure that we hook, uh, we, 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 we get close to him and, um, and, get, and, and get a measure of healing so that we can uh, uh, really uh, say, you know, what the devil meant for harm or what people meant for harm, God has meant for good. So this is this is Jabez. And so here's Jabez. And then we find that having this uh, very difficult and negative background to overcome, uh, we see how did Jabez deal with this painful background? Uh, these things that could have held him back, this negative name, everything, you know, that, that looked like it would hold him back. What did Jabez do? He called on the God of Israel. And, you know, we need to call on the God of Israel and move forward. We can't stay in pain, uh, if you understand what I mean. We can't stay with the labels of the past, you're a pain, or what circumstances have labeled us. We can't do that. How do we break out of being labeled pain or labeling ourselves as pain and being defined by the pains of the past, uh, named, defined by the pains of the past. Well, we have to do what Jabez did, do, did and call on the name of God. And then we have this wonderful um, prayer that you can use, not just if you've been through pain or, or, or if you need healing from pain, but this can be used very powerfully in many different ways. You can take each of the four aspects of this prayer and then you can pray prophetically over different people, different aspects, different situations. And um, I found extremely useful, useful, encouraging and a blessing when I pray it. So the first part uh, that Jabez does is he says, oh, that you would bless me indeed. 
Oh, that you would bless me indeed. And um, this O oh, is not in the scriptures by accident or hasn't been placed in. It, it is this 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 tense that that says, um, oh, that you would bless me. And so there's this desire for blessing, this desire for things to be turned around. Oh, God, that you would bless me indeed. And so there's this desire for blessing. And uh, uh, and this can be many things, of course, uh, blessing in our relationships or oh, that you bless me indeed in my relationships Oh, that you bless me indeed, say, in my difficult marriage Oh, that you would bless me indeed in my career Oh, that you would bless me indeed in my evangelism Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Can, can, you can use this prayer for for many, many things that are on your heart. Oh, that you would bless me indeed and that sort of crying out he called on the late on god and said please lord bless me and it wasn't a selfish blessing it was that he wanted everything that god had for him and that's the blessing now uh, i've shared this story a number of times but um i'll share it again until uh, you know it so well hopefully over the years that the truth will abide in you and um i remember i'd gone through a very painful and difficult trial. Well, when I say that, it wasn't the worst trial I'd been through, actually, but it was painful. It was difficult. And um, I'd come through the trial and come out of the trial, as God always promises that we will when we trust him. And I was sort of thinking back over this trial, and I was reasonably pleased, not arrogantly so, but reasonably pleased in how I'd uh, dealt with it through prayer, trusting God, resisting fleshly at attributes, and uh, as much as possible, encouraging myself to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit d during the time. And so I was just sort of meditating on what had happened. And um, I graded myself and I said to myself, well, I'll give myself seven out of 10 for that, seven out of 10 um, for going through that test. And then I believe I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me on the inside. And uh, it went like this. It went, well done, Bruce. You passed that test but you're not yet ready for my greatest test. Now, as soon as I heard that, I began to, in a millisecond, flash through my mind what the greatest test could be. Bruce, well done, you've passed that test, but you're still not ready for my greatest test. Oh no, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen in my family? What's gonna happen in my ministry? What's gonna happen to my darling? disabled daughter? And all this happened in a flash because actually in real time, uh, God said the whole sentence together. He didn't pause like I've just done. And so I was like worried, fearful for this split second. But then this is what he said. And this is how he said it. it was all one thing. He said, Bruce, well done. You've passed that test, but you're still not ready for my greatest test. Oh, dear. The test of my blessing. Wow. Oh, that you would bless me indeed, uh, says uh, Jabez. And God spoke to me and said, you're not yet ready for my greatest test, the test of my blessing. And Deuteronomy 8 is a wonderful uh, chapter to read. If, um, or is it nine? It's eight or nine. I think it's Deuteronomy 8. It's a wonderful passage where God is just about to take um, the children of Israel finally after 40 years into the promised land of milk and honey and during that passage it's worth reading he talks about all the blessings they're going to experience and the wonderful blessing of this land but during that chapter he also keeps warning them that um, not that this blessing uh, when they're blessed they might forget the Lord their God um, who, you know, took them out of Egypt. They might forget the past. They might forget his goodness because they're so blessed by material things that they forget God, don't need God, and begin to idolize the blessings rather than the God that gave them to. And so that is why uh, great blessing um, comes with great responsibility, whatever form it comes in, whether it comes in great success in career, whether it comes that you have great wealth, um, whatever it, whether it's great spiritual gifting, 
wherever there is great blessing, it is also a very great test. And so he was praying for the blessing and uh, he wanted the blessing. And so use this to pray for God's blessing on your life, not self-centeredly or self-indulgently, but genuinely. He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And so I like that. Bless me indeed. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. And then the second uh, section or the second part of this four part prayer is and enlarge my territory. Wow. Enlarge my territory. And if you read on after this passage, you find that they named a, a town after Jabez. So he certainly got his territory enlarged, but enlarge my territory. Now, for us, that means to pray for expansion, to pray for more, more of the Lord, more of more influence for his kingdom, uh, more kingdom success. Oh, that you would enlarge my territory. Uh, in in uh, Emmanuel, we are we are praying that prayer line, uh, enlarge the tent pegs of your tent and expand. And so, you know, there are frontiers that you need to cross, boundaries that are hemming you in in your life. That it's time to cross. You have to cross frontiers of your comfort zone. Some of us are in comfort zones where we're comfortable. And God is speaking to us in 2023 to cross over into new territory, new territory, uh, cross over the frontiers. Just like Joshua generation had to cross over into the promised land and take it. Don't just be happy with the boundaries of your life right now, uh, but move forward into new challenge and take new ground in your life spiritually and take new ground for the Lord impact, influence, increased momentum, uh, be strong and courageous, new territories, new frontiers, move, cross. So you can use this phrase, enlarge my territory, very powerful, Lee, for um, the, 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 the new things that you want God to do, the new things you want God to do new things new experiences enlarge my territory and then that your that your hand would be with me that your hand would be with me it's so important that god is with us you know god can be for us and uh, and and not with us what do i mean by that well god is for us uh, but it doesn't mean that he's necessarily always with us i think of that time when um, moses God was going to destroy the people and Moses interceded and stopped the destruction. And Moses said, OK, go into the promised land as I promised and I'll send my angel with you. But I'm not coming. You'll have everything I promised, but I'm not coming with you. My angel will sort it out for you. And, uh, and Moses just wouldn't have it. Moses was interceded. No, no, Lord, if you're not going with us, what's the point? We might get all the things you promised, but without you, it's meaningless because you are our portion. You are everything. And so God can do things for you. But is he with you? You know, is he with you? And sometimes people have great anointings, great abilities, great success in all aspects of, of life that God has given them. But is God really with them? Are they really pleasing to him? And so that your hand would be with me. It's not just that your anointing and enabling and empowering will be with me, but not just the power. We want the presence, don't we? We want the presence, not just the power, the presence. And that comes from purity and that comes from fellowship and relationship. Just don't want to be blessed. But I want you the greatest blessing that God can give. What is the greatest blessing that God can give? The greatest blessing that God can give is more of himself. The greatest blessing that God can give any human being is the Holy Spirit and more of the Holy Spirit's presence. OK, so, Lord, be with me, be with me in this, be with me in that, etc. And then um, uh, uh, finally. Um, and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. And I like this translation of it. 
because it's two things. Some some um, some translate it that you would keep me from evil uh, and that I would not have pain. But I like this better because it's two things. It's Lord, keep me from evil, from the evil one, um, from destruction. But also, please help me not to cause pain. And I like that because it reminds me of the um, of the Lord's Prayer, you know, forgive me as I forgive others protect me from evil but also uh uh let me not harm others or hurt others and so that's a great prayer to pray lord protect me watch over me keep me from uh the, the work of the enemy through demons or human beings or both guard me lord guard what you're doing in my life in the other prayer points but also lord may i not cause pain dissension arguments you know there's some people especially in church life. I'm not thinking about Emmanuel right now because I can't think of anything happening, but it happens at different times in all churches where people are just a pain in the neck. They're just pain. They cause pain everywhere. And they stand on their laurels. They're self-righteous. They're judging everybody. They hold people to account in such a high way that they would never hold their themselves into account. They, they get they get um, addicted to a certain doctrine, dig their feet in on a doctrine. And anybody that has a different opinion of, of them is is just dismissed. They won't even discuss it properly. And they'll even leave church over a minor, 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 minor truth. And um, these people are pains and they cause pain. And yet they're Christians. And if you think I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about anybody in particular, well, I'm thinking also about myself because my responsibility is not to be a pain. And there's times I've been a pain uh, in the neck. There's times I've been a pain in my Christian life to others. And I regret that. And I'm hoping to grow. And I do hope and I pray, Lord, that I may not cause pain again in any way. And I think that's something that you pray. So I'm going to pray this over us and we'll, we will end. Uh, oh, Lord, that you would bless us indeed. In every area, Lord, that your blessing flows, let it flow, Lord. In the areas, Lord, where we need your blessing, in the areas where you can bless us with fruitfulness in your ministry, blessing, blessing us in relationships, blessing us in the work of our hands, blessing us, Lord, so that we can be a blessing, we pray in Jesus' name. And Lord, that you will enlarge our territories, that we will cross frontiers, that we will um, leap over into out of our comfort zones that we will increasingly be be people of spiritual and christian impact influence and increased momentum may we be joshua generations and may we move the boundaries that the devil has put around us and unbelief has put around us and may we enter in as individuals and together into the new territory of the kingdom that you have for us and please, Lord, let your hand be with us. Let us feel your anointing, your enabling, your ability uh, in everything that we do, uh, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, Lord. May we do everything that uh, your hand would be with us and that you would be with us. You would be with us. Stay close to us and keep us close to you. And Lord, keep us from evil and defend us from the work of the enemy and the work of evil people. Let there be a wonderful shield around us. You are our strong tower and we run into you and we are saved and protected. So let there be a shield of protection over us all, over Emmanuel, a shield of protection that will not be penetrated by the enemy. And Lord, um, may we not cause pain. May we not cause pain. Lord, may we may may we be the peacemakers, not the troublemakers in the church. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you and see you next week.